All right, welcome back to Vampire. I need to uh, switch my gun, I guess. Some problems over there. Oh, it's uh, all right. I have no bullets, unfortunately. I should probably buy a shotgun. All right, let's uh, go talk with old man Darius Petrescu. Mr. Petrescu, just one minute, please. You again? Go away. Sir, wait. Stop this nonsense. I know Nurse Crane is here. Shall we speak man to man, you and I? <laughs> All right. Speak up. Don't you see we're on the same side? We fight to help the poor, sick, and abandoned. I'm nothing like you, Mr. Totter. Yes, you are. You too believe in providing medical care without charge. You know what we have to sacrifice to make the world a better place. I have to admit your words have conviction. All right, I'll let you see, Dorothea. Don't make me regret this, though. If you want to talk to Dorothea, you must go across the courtyard and take the stairs. We've not been formally introduced. May I ask your name and occupation, sir? I am Darius Petrescu. I'm here to keep snitches and spies away from Dorothea. And I also run this little print shop. Tell me everything you know about Camellia, the mute florist. I do not believe in the afterlife, Doctor, but I'm almost convinced Camellia is an angel. She volunteered to give out our medical leaflets. Are you not worried for her safety? She is as brave as she is tough, and clever too. If only I had met her when I was younger. Are you in love with Camellia, Mr. Petrescu? Don't be stupid. If I had met her when I was younger, we could have won our revolution. Who is she, really? Do you know where she's from? She's not from around here, that's all we know. Camellia is not even her name. It's her favorite flower. You say she has no close family. Well, there's that awful poet who constantly follows her around like a lost puppy. A good man, for sure, but a very poor writer. So Dorothy's real name is not Crane. Like myself and many people in this area. Dorothea is from occupied Romania. That's all you need to know. She seems important to the community. More than you can imagine. The West End does not want to hear of Whitechapel's misery. Dorothea is one of the few doing something about it. Dorothea. Okay. Uh, I did quite expect a game to have Romanians in it, but I'll go for it. Tell me everything you know about Camellia, the mute florist. I do not believe in the... Do you have any family left, Mr. Petrescu? Children or grandchildren? Who knows? I have abandoned my people for so long, they might as well be dead. As dead as I am for them, I suppose. This war won't last forever. Did you ever think of returning to your country now it's free? No. I have taught strength and determination to my sons and daughters. I'm an old dying man who only has memories of better times to cherish. Don't be embarrassed, sir. If you must know, my own father disappeared many years ago, and I forgave him. It's quite awkward to talk about our families like this, but... Thank you, Dr. Reed. I appreciate your trust. I know you fought for your country when it was occupied, Darius. 
Tell me more about it. I know my days are numbered, and I know I won't see my homeland again. But I fought for Romania all my life, and I will until my last breath. But Romania escaped the grasp of the Austro-Hungarian Empire. It's a free country again. But it's not the country I fought for. My homeland is not appeased, Doctor. And I still see a dark future ahead for my people. Is that so? How did you meet Nurse Crane, Darius? Why does she trust you? I'm her oldest friend in England. Dorothea and I share many ideas about this country and about the country we left. You mean occupied Romania, don't you? Even if not directly, I fought against your enemies. Really? Then perhaps you have more in common with Dorothea than meets the eye, Dr. Reed. Is that so? Well, he's a former Romanian political activist. Okay. Camellia, alright. Hmm. Romania after the war was still a new country and it had a lot of issues. Specifically, it fought a war with Hungary. And it got involved in the civil war, the Russian civil war. Things didn't end so well, did, did they? Do you need some help, Mr. Pachescu? I am very tired, but that is all. I don't need you, Doctor. Well, I think you do. Take this, and you'll feel better. Free drugs from an English doctor? <laughs> it must be my lucky day. Alright. Goodbye. Darius Petrescu. I mean, Romania was allied with Britain. I'm just confused as to how he. W I've never heard of so of refugees from Romania fleeing to Britain. And it's important because that's when Romania was unified as a country. All right, she's up there. 1918, Alba Iulia. I need to get up there. Oh wait, he said the stairs, fair enough. These guys are suffering. Okay. What do we have here, nurse? Patient Raz Van Vassily. High fever running on three days. Complaints of dizziness, muscle aches, and head pain. Diagnosed with influenza. Treatment? Aspirin and salicin for the fever and discomfort. Liquids for dehydration. But he's having trouble keeping even water down. Thank you, nurse. Anything else I should know? He did lose consciousness this morning, but he's never had convulsions like these. <coughs> he's not convulsing. He's choking. He's not getting any air. Scalpel. Hand me that scope. What can I do, Doctor? It's too dangerous to operate with these convulsions. Sedative, nurse. Do we have any anesthetics? I'm sorry, Doctor. None at all. I need to perform a tracheostomy. Short pipe. That rubber tube will do. We're going to cut a passage for air through the neck. Yes, Doctor. He's breathing again, but he's coughing up blood. Internal hemorrhaging. I need to make another incision into the chest cavity to drain the fluids from the lung. Prepare another tube. A thoracostomy. Doctor, we've nothing to fight the infection. We need an aseptic environment. Right then, Nurse Crane. What do you suggest we do? I've no idea. I'm not the doctor. Time is of the essence. We need to perform a thoracic drain. Yes, doctor. He's still bleeding, doctor. I'm losing his pulse. The drain must have punctured the intercostal artery. There's too much blood. Are you all right, doctor? I... I can't see. Oh. 
I must first suture the artery. Find the wound. The source of the blood. Needle and thread, Doctor. Good. The stitches are holding. How's he doing? We're losing him. We've lost his pulse. He's dying, Doctor! A dose of epinephrine, now. Yes, Doctor. We've lost the pulse. He, he's gone, Doctor. Yes, we did everything we could. Truly? Everything you could. Is that how you'll report this in your log? Is this how the war went, piling up one poor corpse beside the next? This was not an influenza-induced seizure. I've never seen symptoms like these on the continent. Neither have I. But the previous symptoms leading up to this attack were the same, indistinguishable from the epidemic. No. There was something more vile in these reactions. Something... primitive. There have been numerous reports of mental breakdowns caused by the fever that accompanies the flu itself, Doctor. Yes, but... I'd best take some samples of the blood for analysis. Test my bedside manners. Okay, could we even save him? That is a good question. I suspect it was more than intuition alone that led you to us. So, how might I be of service, Dr. Reed? I've come to put an end to this insufferable blackmailing, Dorothy. Doctor, you think your warnings scare me? I've stolen and plied, blackmailed and lied, but what else am I to do? I'm all these people have. But why Lady Asprey? Why her, of all people? She's pristine and proper, all right. But that she-wolf in sheep's clothing murders the poor for sport. I have her where she belongs, and I'll milk her for all she's got. Dr. Swansea is a sensible and honest man. He wouldn't have refused your friend's care at Pembroke. It's easy for you to say, Doctor. These people cannot go to the police, nor to the hospital. They don't even speak English. They depend on me for everything. So, the end justifies the means. Is that your defense? I know you're kind, Doctor. Just another fine-heeled, silver-spooned gentleman who was given the world on a platter. You know nothing of poverty. Nothing of the shame, the hunger, the loneliness. You've convinced me of the sincerity of your actions and their noble justifications. But all the same, blackmail is a crime. And it will stop, Nurse Crane. So, are you going to turn me over to the authorities? Listen very carefully, Dorothy. You will erase from your memory everything you pretend to know about Lady Ashbury and Pembroke Hospital. Let that rich bitch off the hook over my death. Nurse body. Crane, enough. Listen as if your life depended on every word. I know you have a generous heart who gives freely to those in need, but you shall walk away from the shadier streets of your business. I will never abandon- Dorothy, the discussion has come to a close. Your clandestine activities in the Resistance are over. Let it go. I'll... I'll let it go. Yes. All gone.
If I killed her, it would have gone poorly, but because I investigated properly and did my homework... What the hell? Why? Who brought these guys here? She's alive at least. And the district will survive thanks to her. Alright, some solution. What the fuck? Well... Couldn't resist, could you, by the way, Dafmat? Couldn't resist putting Romanians in a game about vampires. Hello, Mr. Petrescu. Hello, Dr. Reed. Come on in. Yes? Goodbye. Alright, time to go back to base. Although, there are things I should probably find. Let's go to... Right, his home. Okay. Hold on, that's where he lives. I can deal with that later. The pharmacy is at the docks, all right. I'll be back here. But not right now, I, I have other things to worry about at the moment. There are still people I haven't met over here. All right, Camellia. Loretta, Cristina. Alright, first I need to completely stabilize this area, then I can worry about everything else. But first, I should possibly buy some stuff from her. Good evening. I'd like to see. Right, cigarette when cases. science fails you, this elixir will give you faith again. 
Yes, totally. The alcohol will set you free. Less than the good lady. Get drunk, forget your worries. Should stabilize, I think. A bit, at least. Human blood. Whoever left these marks did so deliberately. Kill it, boy! There's one of them vermin! <laughs> Bastard? Roast the leech, boys! Roast the alive! Die, vermin! Burn, vermin! One dead. More blood. Good evening. Good evening, Doc. I'd like to. Wise choice, Doc. So lucky to have Dr. Reed, you know. I met him in New York once. If only there were more of us with less resignation and more determination. I know I can count. It's locked, all right. Good evening. Please, of course. Still don't. I need the recipe somehow. 
I don't know where to find it. Right, uh, first I need to reach that pharmacy. It's... I'm heading the wrong way, I'm not. Yes. Well, if I follow this path, I should reach a safe spot. Yeah, just go down this road. And then I can worry about finding the letter. More blood. Okay. I don't want to fight them. It's just one guy, though. Oh, fine. Vampire hunters are uh, looking in the wrong place. That's a rogue skull. Well, I don't need to deal with that. There's the bridge over here. This guy should be either That's all you got Skulls would smash Oop. Alright, Blavy. Oh, my God. 
I need more healing. Stay down. Dr. Strickland's list. Opium is one of the main ingredients of Strickland's medication. Never a good move. Not, yeah, I have to agree. What exactly? Opium medication? Are you fucking mental? I have to agree with this colleague, his bloody experiment is dangerous. Opium. Really? A drug? Foolish. Extremely so. I need rats. Get me a rats. Well, this is bad. Yes, and you're next. There we go. In this letter, Mortimer Goswick does nothing to hide his desire to die. I could give it to his mother, but doing so would betray his trust. Who gives a shit about his trust? Guy needs help. Okay, I will deliver this letter to his mother. Or maybe talk with him. Or, yeah, first talk with him, I guess. See what options I have.
Good evening, Doctor. Mortimer is extremely vague as to his motivations for committing suicide. Tell me more about what you know. As you say, Mortimer had no reason to die. All he said to me was that he wanted to make the world a better place, but couldn't. Why did your son feel so useless when facing the world? I think it was more that he could only see the melancholy facets of life. He couldn't help but dwell on such things. What do you think he meant by making the world a better place? Mortimer has always been a sensitive soul. He wouldn't talk to anyone for months after his father passed. It's like he carries everyone's sadness with him. Do you realize your son could try to kill himself again? He might succeed next time. I think about it every minute. That I won't stop fighting for my son's future. That's how much I love him. You're right. Your son's death was not fatal. And unlike many on their own, he is lucky to have you by his side. I can't give up on him. I just can't. I have conceded many times in my life, but giving up on my son is something I am incapable of. I have read your son's suicide note. It was not an impulsive gesture, nor was it his first attempt. He threatened to kill himself a few times before. But I never thought he would dare to punish me this much. Punish you? Why? I've known for a long time he was not happy with his life. But I always hoped he cared enough to avoid making me suffer like this. Goodbye, Mr. Good evening. I'm okay. Your mother won't let you down, Mortimer. Don't you share her hope for a better future? No. I don't. Won't you even try? Do you want me to promise you I'll get better? Do you want me to tell her the same thing? I could, but it would not change anything. I've read your letter, Mortimer. You wrote about an unbearable feeling of despair while the world crumbles around you. Tell me more about it. There's nothing more to say, really. It's hurtful, it's unbearable, and I don't ask anyone to understand what I feel. Despair is a deadly poison I've tasted myself, sir. We're only tempted to drink it because we're terrified by the uncertainty of the next minute. I know that perfectly, Doctor, for I waited for so long hoping that the next minute would be less unbearable. I have to... I'm all right. Still... Don't waste your time with me. And still more coming. I never could keep anything. Good evening, Doc. Your son asked me to find this letter, Mrs. Goswick. However, I thought it would be preferable to give it to you. I already know what I'm going to read. Mortimer, why are you acting in this way? I have done everything I can to help you, but it's not enough. We will talk about this letter later. I understand that you need some privacy. Before you leave, take this for your trouble. Thanks to you, my son still has a future. Goodbye. Will this shift never end? Uh, okay. My sweet girl. Reads me like a book. Good evening, Mr. Goswick. How are you? I'm okay. I have to go now, sir. But don't hesitate to contact me if you need any help. Good evening, sir. Doctor. I will not let you down, my boy. How can we be sure we're... 
Good evening, Doctor. And good evening to you. What do you think of Dr. Ackroyd's aversion to modern medical methods? It's a shame he's so narrow-minded. Dr. Swansea taught me that science is about exploring uncharted territory. I'm convinced that's true. With the influenza and all that's going on, you should put your differences aside, don't you think? Why is it so difficult to work together? I believe that if Dr. Ackroyd had been the one to discover the transfusion process, he would be the first to recommend its use. So you believe it's just a question of jealousy and pride? Dr. Ackroyd is as proud as he is blinded by his obsolete concept of medical science. Goodbye. I'm quite b Thank you for your a year. You have the right to disapprove of our methods, and you will cut. Good evening. And good evening to I located the shop, but it was vandalized, and the owner is missing. All I found was your order. I was afraid of such bad news. People are so desperate they're ready to burgle a shop for drugs. That's quite a list you ordered. Opium. Sodium hypochlorite. It can't be just headaches you're trying to cure. This dreadful influenza, of course. I already ran some tests on hopeless cases. Without success, I must admit. Do you realize you could create a lethal poison without the correct dosage? Then there are the legal ramifications. Is this not true of any medical substance, Dr. Reed? However, if you would agree to improve it, I'd be glad to accept your help. As long as you promise to be scrupulous with your experiments, I may try to gather these substances and even help improve upon the mixture. That's all I'm asking for, Dr. Reed. That's all I'm asking. I want to know about these secret tests you run and if they can save people from this epidemic. Speak to me now, Thoreau. I know I may sound presumptuous, but I'm just following your steps, Dr. Reed. I'm casting away the shadows of ignorance by daring to face them. Self-confidence is essential in our line of work, my young colleague, but only if tempered with the correct amount of cynicism. But you never doubt yourself, Dr. Reed. I've read all your articles and books. You performed the most daring research during the war. Okay. You have my support, Dr. Strickland. I know exactly what it feels like to battle an unknown disease with only your mind and force of will to help you. Thank you, Dr. Reed. You don't know what that means to me. Goodbye. I can't let Strickland put his patients at risk with opium. Perhaps an adjusted formula will deliver more of a placebo effect. I should have all those components. Strickland's project could be dangerous. I have a mind to report him to Dr. Ackroyd. I'm quite busy. 
Do you think Dr. Strickland has any chance of curing the Spanish flu by himself? His wish to cure the sick is not driven by pride, but by an idealistic view about our mission here. Honestly, I don't know which is worse. You consider him a good practitioner, yet you will not report his methods. Strickland may be a rival, but I will not use dirty tricks or regulations to prove him wrong. We are doctors, not politicians. I know that you're a busy man, but I could use your help and advice. The great Dr. Reed honors me with a request. What is it exactly? Dr. Strickland devised an experimental drug for the Spanish flu that he asked me to manufacture. You know what I think of fringe medical experimentation? That's exactly why I want you to keep the result, Doctor. I made sure it won't harm anyone, but I'd like you to take care of it. I see. Put it in my cabinet. I'll give you the key. I'll make sure no one uses this medication by mistake. I'll do that. Thank you for your help, Dr. Ackroyd. Thank you for your trust on the matter, Dr. Reed. Thank With you at our side, Dr. Reed, I... Good evening, and good evening to... Did you know Dr. Ackroyd never reported your experimental research, despite the fact he doesn't agree with it? Really? I didn't suspect he knew about my work. I must confess I am surprised. Perhaps he thinks you should realize for yourself the danger of what you're doing. See how condescending he can be? My God, he can be so irritating. Goodbye. It's locked. It's locked, all right. It's locked. It's locked, all right. Now that Dr. Ackroyd has been warned, he should make good use of this formula. Good evening. Good evening. Goodbye. Good evening. Good evening. According to the report I read, your unprofessional conduct put a patient in danger, Gwyneth. That's not true. I know when my patient's life is at risk, and I'm more competent than a lot of doctors that I know. Problem is, I'm a woman. I don't see what your gender has to do with your abilities, nurse. Yes, nurse. Because I'll never be a doctor, no matter what my skills. I could make a decision that could save a life, but oh no, that's unbecoming conduct. I understand your frustration. During the war, I saw the skill and courage of the nurses on duty. But this is neither the time nor the place to start a revolution. To have the right to study shouldn't be determined by sex, skin, or wealth. That's all I'm saying. Goodbye. Yay, feminism! Let's do it in the middle of a crisis. GG. Now, Riley. And I might be more sympathetic if she wasn't responsible for the co cover up. Either way. Oh, where is she? 
She's down here, probably. I would ask you to avert your eyes, sir. Or did you not know it was rude to stare? I knew it. Speak up, Dr. Reed. I like a man who speaks his mind. You killed him. He trusted you. And you killed him. Spare me your sarcasm, Jonathan. You are but newly born in this world. So in the end, the accusation was true, wasn't it? The situation is somewhat awkward nonetheless. I have not been observed sustaining myself for many decades. I have to say I'm a trifle embarrassed. Anyway, I have concluded my inquiries concerning your blackmailer. I see. Please excuse my agitated state. Under normal circumstances, I wouldn't let anyone see me in this condition. The case is closed, your ladyship. The person who took advantage of you has, shall we say, seen the error of her ways. So who was it? My lady. The blackmailer was dealt with using the utmost discretion. The culprit's identity is of no relevance. Thank you, Jonathan. That is exactly what I needed from you. You have proven your loyalty, so... As a friend, please accept this small token of my appreciation. Thank you, my lady. If you have an inclination to learn more about vampires or your current situation, I will be glad to aid you in your quest for knowledge. I don't understand. Why was I created and then left for dead? That is a question only the one who made you can answer. It's not normal practice. I doubt even if you find him, he will answer you considering how cruelly he treated you. So me being a vampire could have been a mistake. I very much doubt it, Jonathan. Contrary to the legends, it is not as simple to make another vampire by just biting someone. I'd like to avoid creating another vampire by mistake anyway. Tell me, how is it done? <sighs> the process is dangerous. It could even kill your potential progeny. If you did decide to sire an offspring, they must drink of your blood, Jonathan. I've been hearing a voice talking in my head. Is this some kind of insanity? It feels like the voice of the vampire that created me. Hush! Tell no one this. It would be unwise to talk of such things amongst British immortals. Speak no more of your maker. How could this cause offense? Only the powerful immortals can mentally call to their progeny. No vampire or hunter will sleep easy knowing that an unidentified elder is stalking the streets of London. Excuse my forwardness, but are you my maker? Me? Goodness, no. Only a foolish immortal would create a progeny without taking precaution, and I'm no fool. A vampire? Is that what I am? What we are? Such a crude word, defined by penny dreadfuls and drunken hacks. No. You are now an Ekon, and that you shall remain. Are you an Ekon, too? Yes, I am. We are the closest thing to what man refers to as vampires. Forget what you think you know about us. So we are Ekons. How can I identify us amongst other vampires? How to put it? All Ekon are vampires. But all vampires are not Ekon. We are a... Uh... ...but a branch of the immortal tree.
Why does Dr. Swansea allow you to feed on the patients of the hospital? Dr. Swansea is a good and compassionate man. He is trying to find a solution for our... hunger. Until that happens, he is clever enough to understand that I only feed upon the dying. What do you know about this Brotherhood of St. Paul's Stole? The Brotherhood is well known amongst London Vampire Society. As long as our kind is discreet, and as long as they do not interfere, we have come to a mutual understanding. And no one suspected you of the murders? As you well know, suspicion has recently fallen on me of killing for pleasure. But you have my word, Jonathan. I take no pleasure in taking a life. Why did you save me in the canning factory? I could hardly stand by and watch such a promising young blood as yourself be torn to shreds by some gutter scowl. William Bishop wasn't the vampire that created me then. No, Jonathan. Whatever their strength and demeanor, scowls are the progeny of careless vampires. It cannot be the other way round. What type of vampire is a skull? Not a true vampire the deformed offspring of lesser vampires. It is a shame these creatures run wild, slaves to their baser instincts. I know this is beyond the pale, but may I inquire your age? Really? And I thought you were gentlemen. If you must know, I'm 27. I've been 27 for a long time now, and 27 I shall remain. Very well. But I believe there is more to this than you are saying. A lady has to have some secrets. And who bestowed upon you this eternal youth? My maker. He left this isle a long time ago. When I awoke, changed, I was chased and attacked by vampire hunters. Prepared and well-trained. Though I can't be certain, more than likely it was the once glorious guard of Prewen. Once glorious, but still dangerous. They have seen better days, but all fanatics are dangerous. You would be wise to stay clear. They are sworn to destroy our kind. You make them sound like some sort of cult. More a society. And like all the best ones, a secret society. I thought them almost gone, but it seemed they have been recruiting. I've been away from London and England for three years. This isn't the city I remember. Things have gone from bad to worse here, Jonathan. I've lived in this city for a long time, and I've never seen it like this. The Spanish flu has hit London that bad. Yes, but it's not just that. I've heard things. Things I've not heard for a very, very long time. There are whispers in the shadows. Something far worse than the Spanish flu is here in the city. What is it you fear? Fear has long since flown this form. But there is something malevolent circling us. I feel fear is merely waiting in the wings. Are there many vampires here in London? Immortals are of a rare breed, and we often tend to hide. But you may occasionally meet some of us at night. Do you know any of them? Have you an idea of the identity of the vampire who attacked me? You mean your maker? No, Jonathan, I have no clue. But I fear he or she is as careless as cruel. To let you discover your new condition by yourself. What do you mean? Every now and then, you may discover an immortal in the deep of the night. But we are a rare and reclusive breed. Our progeny is almost never accidental. Will they all be as affable as you, my lady? I do not see why not. But remember... Even the shark smiles before he bites. That sounds like a lesson from experience. 
Vampire politics are as intricate and sometimes tedious as a game of chess in a gentleman's club. I've learned from experience it is best to decline to play. I bid you farewell. For now, my lady. I must quickly analyze the blood I took from Nurse Crane's patient. Alright, let's analyze that blood. And see what there is there. Then I need to evolve. The next stage of human evolution. Vampirism. The flower's dying. It needs water. Light stamina serum. Razvan Vasily was infected by Spanish flu, but also has the highly unstable blood of the skulls. Is the London vampire epidemic transmitted through the flu? I should talk to Dr. Swansea about it. All right, I need to level up. Tactical ultimate. You lose control and let the beast take over for a short time. The beast teleports itself to all enemies around the and strikes them with furious bros. I should go with blood. You focus your power. 600 shadow. Create a shadow. All right, let's go. You'll block their target's blood in their veins. You create an invisible barrier. That should do it. Wait, how could she have gone missing? I need to find her then. Alright. Costin Sanyat. 